Hello everybody, Tegan here with High Point. Thank you so much for tuning in to tonight's episode of What is in the Night Sky this month. Tonight, I'm gonna be taking you through a beautiful tour of the night sky in the month of February. As per usual, we're gonna be visiting several deep sky objects, and we're gonna see what the moon and the planets are up to this month. So buckle in, and let's see what's really out there. We're gonna stay within the realm of our solar system, kind of, for our first stop, and it's going to be the moon, but also the Pleiades cluster. This is the occultation of the Pleiades cluster by the moon. If you live in the western half of North America, there is an opportunity to see the moon pass in front of, or occult, the Pleiades star cluster. The first stars will disappear around 11.15 on the 5th, but you'll need to ensure the illuminated portion of the moon's disk is out of the view to see any of the cluster's stars. Last month we had the moon occult Mars, and this month we have the moon occult the Pleiades. So given that, we're going to stay within the realm of our own solar system, and we're going to see what the moon and the planets are up to this month. Neptune is too close to the sun to be visible this month, and Saturn is sinking into the lower twilight, which makes it too low to be worth observing telescopically. However, Mercury returns to the evening sky for the last 10 days and rapidly catches up to the ringed planet. Try your luck about 15 minutes after sunset on the 24th and 25th, when roughly a degree and a half will separate the pair. They'll appear very low in the west, directly below Venus, which remains visible for about three hours after sunset. Crescent Moon appears within the same binocular field of view as Venus on the 1st. Now there is still time if you want to observe Uranus, with the planet remaining high above the western horizon for just much of the evening. Jupiter remains within the same 10 by 50 binocular field of view as Aldebaran and Taurus, with the pair joined by the Moon on the 6th. So now that we have visited our planets, we're going to move out past our solar system, but we're going to view a planetary nebula, also known as the Clown Face Nebula. Planetary nebula can be small, faint, and generally hard to find, but every season has one that stands out from the crowd. In winter, that honor belongs to NGC 2392, the Clown Face Nebula. It can be found in the constellation Gemini, just two and a quarter degrees from the star Wasat. It's bright enough to be spotted with binoculars, but the chances are it will only appear as a slightly fuzzy star. A small telescope at low power will show it as a tiny, hazy, circular patch with a bluish tint and its central star easily visible. Larger scopes will show a darker outer ring while staring at the central star and then glancing away will cause the nebula to disappear and then reappear again. Now while planetary nebulae and nebulae in general are best observed under dark skies, Messier 50, our next target, is well observed in light polluted areas. Messier 50 is a cluster that shows fairly well from even light polluted skies. It appears as a large group of stars with a low magnification, but it is best seen with a magnification of around 50 times. Look for a triangular formation of stars in the middle. Now we're not saying don't view Messier 50 under dark skies as dark skies is going to prevent the best contrast between the stars themselves and the dark background. But if you are limited to light polluted skies, Messier 50 is a great place to start as far as open clusters go. Next we move on to Messier 67. Messier 67 is one of the oldest known open star clusters and is easily found within the same 10 by 50 binocular field of view as Acubens. A low magnification of 35 times shows a tight, condensed cluster with a coppery star on its northeastern edge. Next on our list is another group of stars, but it's not a star cluster, it's simply a group of stars, Tegman. Tegman is a neat multiple star for telescopes, and a low magnification of 30 times will show a gold white star with a faint blue companion. Increase this magnification to 100 times to split the primary into two stars of almost equal brightness, with one showing a pale blue or even violet hue. 
If you've ever had the chance to view any of these objects through a telescope, let us know in the comments below and let us know what equipment you used. We always love to hear from you guys. If you have any questions, please let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss any future content on all things astronomy and astrophotography. Again, my name is Tegan. Thank you so much and clear skies. Thank you.